Hello, baseball fans. You're watching On Deck with Tyler Redman. Welcome to On Deck. I'm Tyler Redman. As always, thank you so much for checking out the channel. I do appreciate it. While you're here, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, hit the bell for notifications so that you can stay up to date with everything going on here at On Deck and, of course, with the Atlanta Braves and, of course, all across Major League Baseball. So, uh, it was a busy week for Alex Anthopoulos last week, capped off by a huge trade for Matt Olson. I can't overstate how good of a deal this was. You traded Christian Pache, Shea Langoliers, Ryan Cusick, and Joey Estes for a guy who, if you're going to replace Freddie Freeman, this is the only guy that's going to be able to do that and us be okay with it. All of the business decisions were, were right, were correct here, right? The, they were the right moves. With that said, I know a lot of you uh, probably weren't happy uh, originally, but then the extension came. An eight-year, $168 million extension, and I think everybody sort of uh, accepted that this was a new era, and I, I got to be honest with you, I love this deal. I mean, look, I love Freddie Freeman, too. Don't get me wrong. I think we all are in agreement there, but Matt Olson is going to be a guy that we love to watch for the next eight years. I mean, this is a guy who's going to see the prime of his career, I think. In an Atlanta uniform, he's an Atlanta-born kid. Uh, I mean, this is a guy that I think belongs here. Um, but, you know, that that's not the only move that happened this week. It, it's not. Uh, after, after he was signed, there was Colin McHugh, who became a big part of the Braves' now elite bullpen. And, you know, th there's going to be, there's going to continue to be guys that, you know, come through. And, I mean, Colin McHugh's going to be a guy who I think, you know, Brian Snicker mentioned the fact that there could be an opener at some point. Colin McHugh's got that experience. He's got the ninth inning experience, like a lot of those guys uh, listed here in this picture. Uh, he's a guy that I think could fill any gap needed, and he's a guy that I think is going to be able to do that. But then they, of course, sign Alex Dickerson to a one-year, $1 million base salary contract. Uh, and, you know, he's an outfielder. Uh, I think they're looking for depth at this point. Um, you know, they're they're not looking. Alex Dickerson's not going to be your everyday left fielder. Make no mistake about that. Uh, that position is going to belong to the also recently signed Eddie Rosario, who I told you for months that this was the guy that I wanted the Braves to get. This was the guy that I thought they were going to get, and this was the guy that I I really genuinely hoped that they would get because I think he was by far. Uh, the best hitter throughout the postseason, up and down throughout the postseason last year. And not just the postseason. This is a guy that I think you can count on to get on base throughout the entire regular season. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I think that there's more moves to be made. And again, we're not done. There, There's even more moves. Those are the big guys, you know. Of course, Matt Olson, uh, Eddie Rosario, those were the two uh, big-name guys. But there were more guys like Alex Dickerson. Uh, Phil Gosselin was one that came through. Uh, here pretty recently, and he's going to be one of those guys that, you know, could just add depth to an already extensive lineup, extensive, you know, team. I mean, these are guys that I think are going to be competing uh, to, to make it onto the roster. Phil Gosselin, numbers don't jump off the page, but he's a guy that, you know, he could be a pinch hitter easily, uh, and he's a guy that has had some, some success in the past, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, that I think that that's what spring training is about, right? I, I think that ultimately that that's what spring training is for. But this is what depth is about, and of course, again, not the only one, uh, but obviously a big uh, a big one in Phil Goslin. Another one, Tyler Thornburg. We talked about this guy the other day. Uh, one year deal, very low risk here for Alex Anthopoulos, but a pretty good pickup. He's had some success in the past. He missed twenty twenty one with Tommy John surgery, so we're taking a chance here. But again, low risk. I told you that I think Alex. I thought Alex Anthopoulos was going to sprinkle some guys in. This is what I meant: is to add depth, is to add further uh, e expansion of what already is a very good team. Right? Let's talk about Brock Holt. This is a guy who's had success in the past. He's a former All Star, 2018 World Series champ, of course, with the Boston Red Sox. Again, numbers don't jump off the page: 209 average, 281 on base, 298 slug, and only two homers last year. But these are guys that could add, again, depth. Depth is more than important. And that brings me to Brad Brock. Brad Brock's 2021. Not that great. 630 ERA. 
but his career ERA, 355. Again, former All-Star back in 2016. He signed to a minor league deal. These are low-risk moves, but they're bigger moves than they're going to be given credit for. They're moves that I think are necessary on a team to compete. Uh, again, and it also adds competition. It adds a veteran presence to spring training. It, it adds a lot of uh, things that I don't think, again, are going to get the credit that they deserve. Baseball fans, make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to this channel. As always, thank you for your support.